Hey, this is Krishna from Vice's Brooklyn office. Our Australia office went to the Philippines to get a behind the scenes look at the very lucrative and very popular sport of cockfighting. This is Cockfighting in the Philippines. There is a saying that the life of Filipino is just one scratch and one peck. They live from day to day on the edge of poverty. It's the life of a cock. They're born to die. Men being macho, they are always fighting. They fight for the women, they fight for land, they fight for things they believe in, and that is reflected in the cockfighting society. <laughs> cockfighting is a noble sport. It's an example of how courage can be summoned, bravery. It's like no other sport in the entire world. Commercially, it's probably one of the biggest industries in the whole Philippines. See? The people who take bets would spread their arms like that. And they're called Christos, like Christ. They solicit bets from them. There are many of them, many of them. But by God, they remember every single man who takes the bet. There are more honest people in a cockpit than there are in church. If you're an aficionado of the cock, you'll never lose an election. It's the only sport in which millionaires talk to the common folk, where they, all of them are equal, so we could see democracy really in action. Cockfight will never be declared illegal in the Philippines. There'd be a revolution if it were. My family, uh, my parents started a hotel business, so I got involved in the operations of uh, hotels. And then on the side, I co-founded a beauty contest called uh, Mutianang Pilipinas, which means Miss Philippines, and uh, Miss Asia Pacific. I was president for 31 years, and that's also the reason why I'm still a bachelor. <laughs> Cockfighting, uh, it's very popular here in the Philippines. It's a pastime, but now it's also considered like a sport. So it was easy to, for me to get interested because there was action. And these are game birds, so it's, uh, we feel it's not being cruel to animals because they're, they're bred that way. They're bred to, to fight. You see them, how, how we take care of them. They're really pampered and where they're treated like, uh, like boxers. Through the years, gradually, I was just producing something like 200, 300 roosters a year. It became a business, there was a demand. And so I started acquiring the adjacent properties all around this farm. So it's about 26 hectares now. There are 2,500 cockpits in the country. 30 million roosters die a year. I mean, it's, gro it's growing. Nobody 
gets rich in gambling except if you're the operator of the casino or you're, you're, you're the, the house. When I got addicted to gambling, I'd go all out. I look for where, where they're, they're stuck fighting every day. The craving is so much you can't control yourself. But I got rid of that later on. I felt it's useless. There's nothing happening. Gambling is addicting. That, that's the only downside of this thing. The rest, I think, are positive. There are about 42 employees in this farm. I make sure my, my people are happy. They have a profit sharing. I provide them with concrete houses. I consider them my partners here. From last year's production, we harvested uh, 2,700 roosters and about 2,000 females, pullets. <laughs> Around four in the morning, they start crowing. To me, it's music to my ears now. <laughs> when they crow, I think what they're saying is, I'm the king, this is my territory. Don't come near me, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so they, they have their own language somehow. This is the conditioning fly pens. We need to develop their muscles on the wings because that's where they get their speed and their power as well. In between, we put a female and uh, they can hear that there's a female on the other side, but they, don't, they, they can't see her. What they'll do, they'll fly up so that they can take a glance on the female. So it's a natural uh, exercise for their wings. And the perch, it's just that narrow, so as they know how to, because when they fight, it's the same to target the opponent. They're used to that, their eye, con eye, eye contact to their legs. This is the hospital. This is where we house the, the wounded, those who, that won in, a, in, a, in some fights. So we're nursing uh, their wounds. We're not giving them uh, water in the next two or three days. That way the wound will heal faster and uh, they're trained again to, to fight again. This is the pit where we, we practice them, we sparring. We attach uh, gloves because they have natural spurs and it gets sharp and it, it can blind them. So just like boxers, they also have gloves. <laughs> What we look for are the ones who, who's got the right timing and then they, they tap the opponent and they stretch their legs well and the power, it must, be, must have power at the same time. What's so noble about watching animals kill each other for money? <laughs> no, it's the example that it, it, it gives, you know courage and uh, do or die spirit. It has been so commercialized already and there are people who make loads of money selling chicken feed. Do you think it's here to stay, cockfighting? Oh, forever. Forever. Okay. It's only the women that don't like it. <laughs> they think it's cruel, okay. which it is. Actually, I, I'm nervous every time uh, I gap, but I enjoy it. A gapper is the one who puts the knife on the rooster and the fighting cock. We have to put the knife on the feet of the rooster because uh, if they don't have a knife, they cannot uh, kill the opponent. We want them to hit the opponent uh, at their underarm, at their heart, at the head, which is the weak point. Being a gopper in a man's world is uh, extraordinary and I enjoy it. We, we glamorize the sabo. Seeing my roosters fight, it's like me on the pit fighting the other guy. Then if looks could kill, I, I, would, I would like to kill the opponent. <laughs> yeah.
We had this meeting because I was very, very concerned. The last two derbies we participated, we didn't do well. The roosters weren't cutting. So I, I had to review what we did the last five days, day of the fight, and how the roosters felt. And on Thursday, there's another derby on Thursday. Hopefully they, they cut well, because I'm worried that they may perform the same way and it will be bad, bad publicity for, for Firebird Farm. I don't want uh, the name of Firebird get affected, because it's a business. And then they say, oh, why, why buy roosters from a farm that the roosters don't win? So it's important that uh, we regain back our confidence. There are 111 fights for today or for tonight. The first contact, ours was a little lower, but then I, I saw his, his left leg connected. But then when they went down, the, 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 the opponent started hitting back. And both of them just started slashing each other. Draw. It was a draw. Both of them just died almost simultaneously or at the same time. I hate to lose. That's me. The pride is really connected. The bragging rights and, and that. It's really the pride. I don't mind even if the, I, I win a little, but it's the pride to me is much, much important, much more important. As we see in the words uh, that people use in the Philippines, the cockfighters, they see themselves as the cockfighter. Whether they're conscious or not about it, they're culture bearers. They see themselves as the cock, as the proxy fighter. If your cock becomes tinola, that's like the downfall of your ego. You just don't lose money. You lose your faith. And in many ways, you lose your manhood. You lost your cock. You lose your manhood. <laughs>